today. I'm choosing heaven today. I am walking the road of heaven right now, singing. I'm choosing heaven today. I'm choosing peace today. I'm choosing peace today. I'm choosing love today. I'm choosing love today. I am walking the road of heaven right now, singing. I'm choosing love today. I'm choosing joy today. I'm choosing joy today. I am walking the road of heaven right now, singing. I'm choosing joy. practicing this one this morning and everybody got excited <laughs> this is one of those that get you up and moving so you gonna start dancing jake i'm gonna dance man <laughs> if y'all because of y'all who know jake know if this is gonna be we aim for a treat if this is gonna happen <laughs> here we go <laughs> Love and 
joy down in my heart one more time. I got peace, love, and joy down in my heart. Well, thank you to our music team for getting that love, peace, and joy activated in us and moving in us this morning. We have Paul, we have Cindy, we have Jake, and we have Greg, our music director, on the keyboard. And there's nobody over there I could see. So good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm Nancy Ennis, and I would like to welcome all of you to Unity of Charlotte on this really, really special day. You know, all days are special, and all Sundays are special here. But today, when we think about it, this is United Nations International Day of Peace. And we are joining together with people in prayer and meditation around the world for peace. All kinds of new energy and new movements are happening. And this having a wonderful peace day here at Unity of Charlotte. And for everyone who's joining us on TV, we're glad you're with us. We invite you to join us. We're here every Sunday morning, 1030, to celebrate the presence of God within us and all around us and to do that together. So let's begin our time on this day of peace with our statement of faith. It's in your program and it's on the screen. And let's take that together. There is one presence and one power in my life and in the universe. God the good, omnipotent. And let's go within for a few moments. Just turn within. Perhaps you'd like to close your eyes. And bring all that attention into your physical body. For this is where the Spirit of God resides. Most people find that Spirit in their heart. So bring your attention now to your heart. And feel peace in your heart. This is the peace we all long for. We all want. And it's the peace that is coming forth through us on planet Earth. So we feel ourselves joining in prayer with people around the world in this moment. And we can feel that oneness in our heart. So feeling that now, as we say thank you to God, that people are coming together for peace. And it is happening now. We thank you, God, for all of our blessings. We thank you for unity of Charlotte that brings us together. We let go and let you be in charge. We listen and follow and let you guide, and so it is. Amen. Then let's join together in our mission statement. We are a vibrant community dedicated to celebrating spiritual freedom and sharing abundant joy through love, prayer, and service. Welcome home. And I hope you feel that welcome home today. So we're going to sing again. We're going to sing about peace like a river and peace to the world. So please join in. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. Got love like a mountain, I've got love like a mountain, got love like a mountain in my soul. I've got love like a mountain, I've got love like a mountain, I've got love like a mountain in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. Like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my Raise up your hands 
and put a smile on your face. We're talking to everybody in a human race. We're proud and strong, so stand up tall. Let's all get together, bring peace to the world. Well, let's all get together, bring peace to the world. Let's all get together, bring peace to the world. Every man and woman, boy and girl, let's all get together, bring peace to the world. There's a train of love beginning right here. So jump on to it and I have no fear. It's yours, it's mine. We've got to call. Let's all get together, bring peace to the world. Let's all get together, bring peace to the world. Let's all get together, bring peace to the world. Every man and woman, boy and girl, let's all get together, bring peace to the world. Shelter the homeless, open your door. Feed the hungry and give to the poor. Offer your heart now, don't think small. Let's all get together, bring joy to the world. Let's all get together, bring peace to the world. Let's all get together, bring peace to the world. Every man and woman, boy and girl, let's all get together, bring peace to the world. One more time. Let's all get together, bring peace to the world. Let's all get together, bring peace to the world. Every man and woman, boy and girl, let's all get together, bring peace to the world. Every man and woman, boy and girl, let's all get together, bring peace to the world. And as you make yourself comfortable in your seats, reach out and take the hand of someone sitting close to you. And feel the love and the peace that flows from one to another. And as we feel that love, we know that we are one throughout this room throughout this city, throughout this state, throughout the world, and all over the world, people are joining together to pray for peace. There's a book written that says, ask not for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for me. Everything that influences your brother and your sister influences you. And as we gather and pray for peace and understanding and love, we are influencing the entire world. So when you ask, what can one person do to make a difference? Pray. Pray for peace. Pray for love. And pray for understanding. God bless you. Good morning. The daily word for today. September 21st. I behold the Christ in you. From time to time, I may find myself judging another person for their actions or choices. Yet, condemnation does not help others change. The best way for me to help another person is to behold the divinity the Christ within them. 
I empathize with others because I understand that everyone makes mistakes. We may try in vain to get satisfaction from the world while deeply longing for fulfillment only spirit can bring. When we awaken to the truth that we are sacred beings, we find a source of true happiness and joy. I let go of judgment and see the truth in myself and others. The Christ is in all of us. I want to repeat that. The Christ is in all of us. I behold our sacredness with love and acceptance. I rest knowing that we are one. When I awake, I shall be satisfied, beholding your likeness. Psalm 17, 15. I am Darcel Spears. I will be your chaplain for today. For anyone who would love to come and share with me anything that's on your heart, whatever it may be. I'll be back um, to your right as you go out the door. So after service, looking forward to meeting with you and praying with you. Keeping my date with peace. We're good. Resides right here. I'm keeping my dates with peace. I'm keeping my dates with peace. I am keeping my dates with peace. I'm laughing and singing and jumping around. I'm keeping my dates with peace. I'm playing, I'm learning, I'm growing every day. I love my friends and family. Peace allows me to be me. I'm keeping my days with peace. I am keeping my days with peace. I'm laughing and singing and jumping around. I'm keeping my days with peace. I'm playing, I'm learning. I'm growing every day. I love my friends and family. Peace allows me to be me. I'm keeping my days with peace. I am keeping my days with peace. I'm laughing and singing and jumping around. I'm keeping my days with peace. I'm laughing and singing. And jumping around, I'm keeping my days with peace. <laughs> Thank you, girls. Thank you. <laughs> oh. How wonderful. Thank you. And that song was written by all of Lawrence Tolliver. For the children to sing, and he's been rehearsing with him. Thank so it is my great privilege and my great pleasure to introduce somebody who needs very little introduction. Most of us know Lawrence, and he's a very vital member here at Unity of Charlotte. And I wanted to tell you a little bit about him. He is the Vice President of Peace Centers International, 
Margot is the president, and they work together for peace. And that's kind of spreading out around the world. And you think about it, Chicago to Charlotte, you know, and that's always back and forth, and they're right on target with each other. He's also the founder of the Peace Assembly here at Unity of Charlotte. He's been meditating for peace for about a year and a half. Every Tuesday night at 7, everyone's invited. This is where the space is held for peace. And recently, he has written a book, Here's Peace. And we'll be seeing that soon, won't we? Yes, you yes, will. Yes, we will. <laughs> also, um, I'd like to tell you that he is a dedicated peace activist. He is someone who has pledged his life to create a new peace movement. That's pretty incredible, isn't it? Let's welcome Lawrence Tolliver. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to get started in a way that I've learned to get started, and that is with meditation. It will be a guided meditation, and I want your permission for me to say the word I for you. In this guided meditation. We want to relax every muscle in our bodies and trust the seats that we are sitting in. Get a comfortable position for your feet, for your arms, for your hands. Release the tension that may be in your neck and your shoulders. The tension that you find in your forehead needs to be released. Soften the muscles around your eyes. Do not clench your jaws. Relax your jaw. Settle in to the peace that resides there. And come along with me as our earth spins its eastern edge into the rays of the morning sun. The dawning of this new day of peace begins on the island nations of <coughs> Fiji and New Zealand. Awaken to the beauty of Sydney, Australia, as the earth continues to spin its eastern edge into the light of the sun. Here there are meditators in Tokyo. As the earth continues to rotate, Vladivostok, Russia, receives the morning rays. Further south, Singapore receives the morning rays. Then we behold divine life awakening in Jakarta, Indonesia. Sun rays find their way to Nepal in the Himalaya mountains. As the earth continues to traverse its way around the sun. Peace donors in Yekaterinburg, Russia, are awakened and go on their way. 
The people of Tehran, Iran, awaken as the sun rays reach them. And the faithful in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, receive those rays and so do the grasses of the field and the flowers and the leaves on the trees. Paris is awakened as the sun shines upon that bright city. Meditators in London greet sun rays that give life and bring life to the earth. In Dakar, Senegal, on the western edge of the continent of Africa, sunlight is seen as a new day dawns. Meditators in Sao Paulo, Brazil, awaken as the sunlight traverses the Atlantic Ocean, finds its way to the great South American continent. And then Caracas, Venezuela, awakens to the sunlight that shows up there. And finally here, in the eastern U.S. city of Charlotte, where a minister pronounces and practices love every day, all day, is awakened to a new, bright, sunny, and peaceful day. As sunlight awakens and stimulates the essential and vital processes of life on the land, in the seas, and in the air, so our prayers, our praises, our gratitude and meditations amplify the peace that resides within every living cell everywhere. Sunlight crests the horizon around the globe. Roosters alert all the farm animals as leaves, blades of grass, blossoms, buds, and flower petals lean into these life-giving rays of light. This is the dawning of a new day of peace for every form of life. Twenty-four hours a day, every day, peace is awakened. And so it is. I was blessed to turn on my computer and go to the internet on Friday the 19th. And lo and behold, the United Nations was streaming its program, its commemoration of the International Day of Peace that was first, I guess created is the best way to put it, by the UN in a vote during 1981. There were two countries that brought the resolution to the floor of the General Assembly. The United Kingdom was one of those countries. Costa Rica was the other one. And they proposed that there be an annual recognition of peace, a declaration of peace everywhere. 
because the United Nations considers peace to be its core mission, its major reason for existing. It believes, however, that peace takes place between nations, and that's how they think peace is created. We can accept practicality. Practicality says if you actually declare, as we do, that peace exists because God exists, <coughs> then you would be practicing religion, and they don't want to practice religion. But we know the source of peace is God. We know that from our personal experiences. And we know that we can access, access this peace every time we intend to, no matter where we are, what's going on around us, or who's nearby, or the music that's in the air, or the clanging or the noise of life. We have disciplined ourselves so that we can go in and connect with that peace that abides within any time we want to. This year, the theme that the United Nations has is actually a theme that was first acknowledged and, and voted upon by them in 1984. And the theme this year is the right of peoples to peace. So basically they are affirming that all peoples have a right to peace. We affirm that all peoples have access to peace all the time. That's what we affirm. But we are very happy this day to be celebrating and commemorating peace here at Unity of Charlotte. But we have wonderful activities scheduled for this afternoon, and I invite you all to just spend a few hours basking in peace and doing your part to be a vessel of peace. Take a couple of hours. Allow yourself to be a vessel or instrument of peace this day. We're going to have a rare occasion to go down to the lower parking level to the wonderful labyrinth that has been created there. And I want to acknowledge the member of your congregation who is the primary driver of that labyrinth. Rose, why don't you stand and let us acknowledge the work that you have done. You see how tiny and petite she is? She hauled around buckets of asphalt, learned how to mix it, and to apply it to create that wonderful labyrinth down there. I mean, she put her heart into it, and she keeps it up. She repairs it when it needs to be repaired. She, it's, it's her paint strokes that made the circles and the path into the labyrinth and out. It's her dedication and love that caused that to happen. And we are so grateful, and we honor you for your dedication, your persistence, and your faith. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So those of you who have not participated in a labyrinth ceremony, um, you will be introduced to the ceremony, uh, the details of it, and how to comport yourself 
as you go in and come out. That introduction will take place this afternoon during our one o'clock program. There is a young lady uh, who's joining us at that time, Wendy Mills. And Wendy has become one of those experts, one of those lay experts, and she understands what type of labyrinth we have, and she understands what you can accomplish by approaching your walk into the labyrinth and what you can accomplish as you exit the labyrinth. So she will instruct you on how to go in, how to come out. And on Friday, I received a phone call, and there is a, another member of your congregation who made a call to me. And at the time, she was in Wyoming at the foothills of the Grand Teton Mountains. Um, so uh, uh, Karen reaches me on the phone, and I have to take a moment to recognize and pay attention. Oh, it's Karen uh, with the healing hands. <laughs> so uh, Karen says to me, I'm over here uh, at these mountains, and there's sage all around. And I just think that Spirit is leading me to call you and find out if I can bring the sage to you. Well, oh, dumb me, I didn't know what sage was about. <laughs> but I got a quick education, I promise you. And uh, so right in front of us, right here, is the sage from Wyoming. So all of the love that you have is, is being communicated in and through this fresh, freshly harvested sage. Now, sage has some properties that allow it to serve as burnt incense. But this is fresh, meaning it's not dried. We are not going to light it. <laughs> so it, it, is, it is important for everyone to understand, do not strike a match and light this. <laughs> but we do want you uh, who are participating in the labyrinth ceremony and in the Peace Walk, we do want you to take a twig with you. And you will receive further instructions on how to handle uh, the sage and the significance of the sage. Now, the word sage really kind of relates to the word wisdom. A wise one is a sage. Uh, and sage is, uh, is valued because of its cleansing properties. That's what sage does for you. And there are wonderful recipes that you can find on the internet that will tell you how to use sage in your daily cooking. And it will tell you that it is an antioxidant. And anybody that has aching bones and joints knows that you want an antioxidant to help you out. So sage has wonderful cleansing properties. And so I'm looking at Reverend David shaking his head. He probably would tell you a lot more profound things than I can about sage. <laughs> and perhaps one day he will do that. <laughs> That'll be wonderful. But um, we want to thank Karen Lewison for the thought and her acting on spirit, because we don't all do what spirits say do. <laughs> Karen does. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> That's just terrific. Thank you so much. And then we have a young lady that is going to help us out with our peace walk. Her name is Pam Turner. Pam Turner is the prefect 
of the Sahaj Marg uh, meditation group here in Charlotte. Uh, she uh, manifested her love last summer. I can remember conversing with her. Her group in India was hosting a large international gathering there in India. And she so wanted to be there, but had no personal financial means to do so. But she just knew things were going to turn out perfectly for her, and they did. The money just materialized. And she spent two weeks in India last summer because the heart of God moved. The heart of God moved on her behalf. And there she was, experiencing the growth and the, you know, the, the whole feeling of togetherness and the strength that comes from being with those of like kind and mind and heart. Well, Pam suggested to us when we began to talk about this day, she suggested, why don't we have a peace walk? And so a couple of months later, she and I explored the possibilities, walking up and down Arrowwood Road just to determine where we would go, what we would do. And so she is going to help you to understand, along with Reverend Margot, how to approach the Peace Walk so that it is reverent. We are engaging in a series of sacred practices today. That's what we're doing. So the ceremony at the labyrinth is a rare sacred practice for us. And perhaps it won't be so rare after we experience it. We get, you kind of wrap our arms around the possibilities. Maybe we'll do it frequently. And then the walk that we go on really has been modeled by one of the great monks of this age, Thich Nhat Han, the Vietnamese monk. He has modeled just what a sacred peace walk ought to be like. And you could go online and see the video of the peace walk taking place and get an understanding of how to prepare yourself and how to comport yourself on the walk. So this day is a special day of sacred activities. And you and I know the earth needs all the sacred activities we can bring to it. So dedicate the next few hours, if you will, to what we are doing. We're going to help you understand how to magnify and protect the peace that you experience within. That's what our guest speaker this afternoon will be helping us with. And I just know if you are paying attention to what Michael Golding is saying and demonstrating, that you will be able to come up with more meaningful sacred practices for yourself. So I'm looking forward to him you know, just helping every one of us to grow in our ability to amplify peace. We're going to have a memorable time, and I just want you to lend your heart and mind to the experience of the day. I have some lofty ambitions. At age 71, I'm not going to be able to finish everything that I start at this point. <laughs> you know. Now, if I didn't have any ambitious, uh, ambitions, I could finish everything I, I wanted. But I have ambitions. 
I just shared with you a vision of peace on earth. That's what the meditation was, a vision of peace on earth. I kept underscoring in the meditation that peace is already here. When sunlight strikes a blade of grass, it is awakened and it immediately begins to engage in photosynthesis, immediately. And no matter how many blades of grass you are standing among, you can't hear photosynthesis taking place, can you? You can go into a forest where there are just gazillions of leaves, and you can't hear photosynthesis taking place. The red blood cells that are being produced in the bone marrow of every person in this room, by the millions, those red blood cells are coming alive in you, and you have no conscious awareness of that production. Your body is producing life for you, and it's doing so peacefully. Now we know that intelligence manifests in reality right here. We know that beauty manifests in reality on this plane that we occupy. And I am affirming to you right now just as beauty and intelligence can manifest, so peace manifests. And what better way than to be a part of the essential and vital processes that keep you alive? What better way for peace to show up? So right here in Charlotte, a company of men and women is creating and building a sustainable peace movement. The elements of this new peace movement are easy to comprehend spiritual concepts. The first concept is unity. Now, all of you adults in here have been schooled in it day in and day out every time that you turn your mind and heart toward this faith that you practice, unity. There is only one life being lived, expressing itself as each one of us and everything. The second concept is that peace accompanies life everywhere peace manifests. That's the new concept that we're putting out there and just trying to drum in and let you know that peace is not lost. Okay? It's not elusive. It is not a fantasy. It is not a make-believe. And it certainly is not something that we have to wait for the United States and um, some country in Arabia to conclude. Any decisions that they make, we know, are temporary. And they have a hard time making temporary <laughs> conclusions <laughs> and agreements. So peace is not dependent upon agreement between nations or between individuals or between leaders. It is really not dependent on any of that. If it were dependent on that, we'd all be in deep, deep trouble. <laughs> we wouldn't be able to find peace if it were left up to the people I've spoken about, and the nations, no. No. We have to turn the world on to the permanent presence of peace everywhere. Because you and I know that the only way for, for 
truth to prevail is for us to embrace it, to embody it. We know as a new thought congregation that we have to embody the truth we choose to experience. I choose to experience global peace. Now that's a big ambition, really big. Now, if you choose to experience global peace with me, then we're going to have to know that it's a multi-generational project. We can start it. But our children's children's children may have to finish it. Grand visions have come through the minds of men and women throughout the ages. I mean, the Christian church started out with a handful of rather shaky men. And I'm not talking about Jesus the Christ. I'm talking about his boys. <laughs> now we know divinity had to have something to do with the survival of Christianity. God said, boys couldn't have kept anything going. I mean, get serious about this. We have to tell the truth about it. And so more than 2,000 years ago, a handful of shaky people decided they were going to start a world religion. And they did, didn't they? Now, Paul the Apostle, he wasn't a shaky guy at all. He was one serious dude, <laughs> really. And we need some serious Pauls for global peace to manifest. That's what we need. We need a serious, detailed vision that allows us to get from point A to point B to point C to point D and just keep us growing in this work, in this new peace movement. We need some serious Pauls. And we are assembling them in the peace assembly right here at Unity. Women and men who are serious about peace, who know they don't have to depend on anybody's Secretary of State for peace to prevail. It's up to us. We are the vessels of peace. You and I know that a very wonderful thing happens in every <clears throat> newborn child. And I'm, I'm talking about when the sperm and the egg get together and create new life, right then and there, cells begin to divide. And the division is such a strong process, such a pulsation of life, it just keeps multiplying and multiplying, but somewhere along the line, specialization takes place. There is an innate intelligence within that throbbing, living cell that starts dividing and dividing and dividing. Somewhere along the line, certain cells express themselves as the heart. Those cells can't do anything else but be a heart. You wouldn't want your liver cells to be responsible for pumping your blood, <laughs> would you? Okay. And the red blood cells that capture the oxygen 
and just traverse throughout your body, delivering the energy of oxygen, those red blood cells, I mean, what would we do if they tried to act like fingernails? <laughs> there is this intelligence that enables the cells to express in specific ways that only those cells can accomplish. So the question is, what are you expressing? That's the question. You're living a life <clears throat> dependent upon this pulsation within you that is your life. We need you to decide to express divine principles and properties. As spiritual beings, we can choose the life we want to express. And I am urging you, if you don't have any other point of reference or direction, I am requesting you to consider expressing your life as peace on earth. We need you. Yes. Yes. We need you with all of our hearts. We need you. Thank you. protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. God bless.